Feminist Teacher's Pet Syndrome. Were all feminist teachers pets? This video was inspired by one of the honey badgers, I believe, Allison, from a recent episode of their radio show. So I want to give credit where credit is due. She said something about a feminist in a BuzzFeed video that she felt must be obsessed with being the teacher's pet, and it got me thinking. I don't believe that all feminists were simply teacher's pets, but I do think there is a particular phenomenon that happens with many of them, and I have concocted a theory based on a few pieces of data and my own experiences. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is just anecdotal, but as feminists say, the personal is political, so fuck off. I grew up in the 80s and 90s and went to public school in a very progressive and feminist-leading city. I generally hated school, and my teachers hated me. And I know this because we had a particular grading system that they don't have absolutely everywhere, where they put subjective factors into your grades, like how well behaved you were, and how much effort you put into your work, which is kind of silly. I mean, I kept getting deducted points for not trying hard enough, even though I generally did really well academically. Which I think is kind of counterintuitive, shouldn't I have been rewarded for doing well without having to try too hard because I was smart? I have heard numerous feminist critics claim that feminists deliberately advocated for these types of subjective grades because they felt boys were privileged in education. I searched and asked around, and I couldn't find any specific citation about when these types of grades began being implemented, but I do know that they aren't entirely universal. Many people I talked to had them, and they seem to be popular in Canada from what I hear, but some people I talked to had never heard of them. Regardless, there is an article published in 2013 from a study conducted by the University of Georgia that somebody directed me to that provides evidence to suggest that girls do better in terms of grades, even though boys do better in standardized tests generally because of behavioral standards from teachers. I'll link that paper in the description. If we think about this a moment, it is clear that teachers can insert bias at almost every step of education in certain subjects, even without these subjective grades. Not so much with math and science, though common core math is starting to change that in some ways if you have heard of it. However, there is a disproportionate number of boys and men who excel at math and science in school, which is why they have affirmative action quotas for women in those fields so often. Regardless, think about early school and things taught like handwriting. It is very subjective who has proper handwriting. English is subjective in many ways, and I even heard from some people I talked to that they got partial credit in spelling during elementary school because the teacher felt they tried hard. Add to all of that the behavioral standards which cater to quiet kids that sit still, and we know that it's generally going to be the girls who succeed in this environment. If you're going to argue with that, this is not the channel for you. Growing up, I remember several female teachers' pets, but not so many male ones. I also remember horrible double standards of treatment for myself and my female peers. In the second grade, I was sitting next to this girl, and she thought I farted, and I sincerely didn't, and she demanded I say excuse me. She raised her hand and told the teacher, and the teacher actually made me apologize in front of the entire class. It was insane. In the third grade, the girl next to me was shushing me ridiculously as I was quietly singing to myself or something while putting my books away or whatever, and I called her a butt. She ended up crying and I got in a fair amount of trouble. In the fourth grade, I remember coming back from going to the bathroom and running and sliding on the floor on my side just for fun while some girls were working on something in the hallway for whatever reason. They decided to tell the teacher on me and she actually tried to tell my teacher about it like anybody should care about the victimless, non-teacher witness potential infraction, but that was the only cool teacher I had in elementary school, and she was this cool lesbian that didn't care. In the fifth grade, I got in trouble for writing inappropriate stories repeatedly that I would share in front of the class, even though the class really enjoyed them, but a girl was literally allowed to write an ongoing story about a serial killer, and the teacher didn't care. I guess because her story was serious and mine just had inappropriate humor in them. And she hated me. A lot. All of these students were teachers' pets, and while some of them might have been intelligent, it was very clear that they were very well aware of their favoritism. Not just towards good kids, but likely just over girls in general, and they use it to their advantage. 
high school was different because I went to alternative high school and because I came out as gay, which actually granted me a lot of sympathy points from the types of teachers that favored girls. But I enjoyed high school and I felt my teachers were pretty fair at my school. So I can't get into that too much. Maybe maybe I felt like they were fair because they actually liked me. However, in college, I noticed that a lot of the shy, quiet, good girls were still there. And the weird thing is that some of them still got by with that whole routine. I remember several of them never speaking in a class, and I went somewhere that had 15 students or less in every class. So participation was supposed to be mandatory. In my advanced playwriting class, a few of us wrote like 90-minute scripts that semester. But one girl wrote something like 15 minutes long, and that was all. Somehow she passed, and I was given a C for showing up too late often. So here's the theory. When girls are treated like this, like coddled, given better grades, and maybe even made to feel that they are inherently superior to boys, the people hurt by this the most in the long run will be the individual girls. They learn to suck up as their primary way of getting by, but there will be a point in their lives where that just doesn't work anymore. In most instances, at least if they don't just want to be a secretary or office assistant or whatever, they'll be kind of screwed. Eventually, reality will hit them. They will have a legitimately fair professor in college, and they won't give them a B- minus on a bullshit paper. Maybe they will get treated like a man does at a job and be horribly offended by how men talk to each other. They will start to think the world is unfair not because it is still unfair, but because it had been unfair to them prior, but stacked in their favor. And now it isn't. So when these girls find feminism, especially current feminism, it is the biggest relief in the world. It tells them that their own learned inadequacies based on their lack of motivation to try harder as a byproduct of being well-liked by their teachers is actually just some sort of symptom of discrimination. For example, they get to think that if their male coworker is condescending to them because the woman is legitimately kind of ignorant about a subject, then it's the man's problem because he was just mansplaining, when in reality he was probably talking to her like he talks to ignorant men. Feminism these days trains women and girls to think that equal treatment is sexist and that they are entitled to various things. Men have to take up less space than them on subways or they are accused of manspreading, even though men's bodies are anatomically different than women's and it is harder to sit with their legs together. Men are accused of being sexist for air conditioning temperatures at their workplace, supposedly making women cold, even though men are generally demanded to wear shirts and ties and women have more flexible options of work attire. Fourth wave feminist entitlements and double standards could be listed on and on, but I think it could be symptomatic to women who were always favored during their upbringings and are now demanding that the rest of the world cater to that sense of entitlement that they got from their teachers. But I'll even take it a step further than that. I think that feminism, being the most funded and promoted pop cultural entity at the moment, also kind of replaces the teacher archetype in the mind of these teacher's pet syndrome feminists. Instead of being the teacher's pet, they get to be the favorite pet of the feminist establishment. They get to think that they are right about everything all the time because there is this gigantic establishment and wealth of literature to back up everything they want to believe. The very act of being a feminist in current times especially could be seen as an act of sucking up because it is clearly telling culture what people want to hear. It's what universities want to hear. It's what Clinton wants to hear. It's what MTV wants to hear. It's what the blogs want to hear, besides a voice for men. It's what Twitter wants to hear. It's what Facebook wants to hear. It's what HBO, Comedy Central, and Hollywood wants to hear. The only people that generally don't want to hear it are YouTubers. But the new rules are cracking down on people that criticize feminists. So this is my theory. Fourth wave feminism is the product of an entire generation of girls that were told they were special simply because they were easy for the teachers to deal with. Their entitlements come not just from that, but from the fact that they literally were given better grades because of that. And some of them are now unable to handle difficult tasks in adult life or situations where they couldn't tattle to the teacher. That's why they can't handle being disagreed with on the internet without assuming it is misogyny or reporting you to the authorities and trying to get your account banned. And that's also why so much of their movement is not about female empowerment, but instead victimization. 
this unfair system of grades in school, done in the name of fairness, manifested an entire cultural movement that demands that these women receive special treatment and also be immune to criticism. And it is highly profitable to anybody to cater to it. Because I have a feeling that entitled women also spend a lot of money. But what do I know? It's just a theory. Drop me a comment and stay tuned for more.